Hi everyone, my name is Paige Doherty and I'm a senior at San Diego State University and this is my presentation on Shazam, a study in audio recognition for my technical communications class. So in this presentation, I'm going to go through an introduction of Shazam, um, my motivation behind presenting this information, um, and then the three main phases of the technology that Shazam uses to recognize music. So that's sonic visualization, fingerprinting, and then hashing and hash tables, as well as I'll discuss um, the ethics of audio recognition and then um, related future works. So an introduction to Shazam. Let's say you're in a friend's car and hear a song that you really like. Without having to interrupt someone who's driving, maybe they can't hear you, you can pull out your phone and basically go on and type Shazam. So here's your Shazam app. And if you hear a song you like, you'll press the Shazam button. And basically what happens when you press the Shazam button is that Shazam creates a digital fingerprint of the audio that you're listening to and within seconds matches it to its database of millions of songs. Um, after that, you're then given the track name and associated information like the artist's name, lyrics, concert tickets, and recommended tracks. That's a bit of an introduction into how Shazam works from a user perspective. And now I'm gonna dive more deeply into the technology perspective, which is like that middle part. Um, and I wanted to explain my motivation behind choosing this for my presentation topic. Number one, I'm interested in music. It's always been an interest of mine. I really enjoy going to concerts um, and I spend a lot of time listening to music. I'm also, my second part of the motivation for this project was I'm in a speech processing class and we're learning about how computer audio, audio systems parallel biological audio processes, which is really interesting because the hearing and audio recognition of the human body is just like such a complicated process and is really interesting to me. Um, so I wanted to learn more about the technological implementation of it. Um, and then my last part of my motivation for choosing this topic was that I really appreciate simple applications of technology. And I think Shazam is a great um, example of a application that does one thing and does it really well. And there's kind of a magic in hearing something, whether you're in a crowded bar or your friend's car and there's like a lot of distractions going on, you can still find out that song that just reminds you and will continue to remind you so deeply that moment. So I'm gonna dive into the technology behind it now. So as I spoke before, there's three main parts of Shazam. So one is the sonic visualization, which I'll get into next two is the fingerprinting, and then three is the hashing. So what does sonic visualization mean? Basically, when you hear um, any audio, you have to translate that from a digital sound to a frequency using the fast Fourier transform. So in the middle of this arrow, um, this is an example of the fast Fourier transform. It's a super complicated mathematical formula that basically, if I had to give an analogy for it, it's kind of like you hear sound straight on and the fast Fourier transform um, transforms the sound into a 3D graph um, and also includes the intensity of the sound. And so on the right, what you'll see is a spectrogram. Um, So the next part is the constellation map. So from the spectrogram, basically what we want to find out is where are the local maximum happening in the sound? Because when you're in a crowded environment, it can be really difficult to pick up um, on like the specific parts of the song. And so this is Shazam's, like probably my favorite part of their implementation is they use such a simple way to identify um, really specific parts of the song. And so this 
is a constellation map. So it's basically a bunch of X's that mark where on the spectrogram local maxima are for the sound. So that's periods of most intensity for a sound. And we use those because they're least likely to get distorted. So whereas you might think that it would be useful to use local maxima and minima, minima have um, a higher chance of being distorted by background noise, which is pretty common when you're listening to music in any public space. Okay, so the constellation map is then used to, well, it's then stored in a hash table data structure with coordinates of frequency and time. So you can see on the y-axis there's frequency, and then on the x-axis there's time. So this is important to remember because this is generated, like sometimes when you listen, you're, you know, you might listen to a song for 10 seconds and you're like, I like this. And it takes you a little bit to pull up your Shazam app and put it in. And so what's really important about the constellation map and the next part that I'll get into is that it's time invariant. So you can use this recognition anywhere within that song. Um, but what's really important is that in this hash table will also be stored the offset um, of this music. So basically like your anchor point is the start of the recording. So this is a bit about what I discussed on the last slide. So once a constellation map is generated, a hash will be generated with respect to certain anchor points. And What's important about this, which I'll discuss on the next slide, is that these hashes focus on the change in time from local maxima. So what is important to consider when you're looking at changes in time is that if you calculate and store that information, it doesn't matter where you start your recording because the, the changes in time will be constant wherever you are in the recording. So this was a really interesting part of the implementation um, and it means that a user can get a result from any sampled continuous seconds of a song. And I think one caveat for this is that because Shazam is used so much and it has um, so much data now, it's getting a lot faster. And so it only takes like 10 milliseconds to recognize most songs that are Shazammed often, which I think is really interesting. Um, but the, it can use any sample 10 seconds um, within the song. So this collection of distances between local maxima, um, also known as hashes, forms a song's fingerprint, which is a digital signature. So when generated, um, this is like prior to something being recognized, basically Shazam had to go through and do this for like millions of songs so that they could store these um, unique fingerprints in their um, database, which has created quite a competitive moat for them as a company because it's really, really difficult um, to fingerprint, you know, millions of these songs. And it even works for songs that are even on um, only like a different streaming platform. It works for remixes. So they've been very proactive about scraping the web for new songs. Um, and so anyways, um, when generated, this fingerprint or collection of distances will be stored in a song database with its associated track ID. Um, so it's basically stored as that hash, which um, is time invariant, like we discussed on the last slide. Excuse me. And then it's stored with its time offset uh, plus the track ID. So basically, when you search for it, it takes this left side, the 32-bit hash as an unsigned integer, and searches for it in a database that has these pairs um, so it's basically the hash that you're looking for, and then it has the time offset plus the track ID. And so when it searches for, um, the track, what's really unique is that it has a runtime of O of 1 because they're stored in a hash table. And so this 
this implementation of audio recognition made a really complex task really simple and really fast and that's kind of the magic of Shazam. Um, so this is an example of what happens when you have a song that gets recognized. Um, once recognized in the hash table pairs, Shazam will return the associated track ID as well as other relevant artists, concert biography, and recommendation information. So I'm going to play, this is a screen record um, of Shazam. Oh, just kidding. Okay. There we go. So this is a song and you can see recommendations, track information, and then also a way to share. Okay. So a little bit on the ethics of audio recognition, because I think this is something important to touch on. Um, it's a concept applied here, but it's also applicable in voice audio recognition, i.e. Amazon Alexa and Google Home. And it has come up in the news quite a bit on, you know, what is the ethics of a personal device listening to you and applying that to, per se, targeted marketing campaigns. And then also audio recognition serves as a cornerstone of our cultural history and the songs and music that define our generation. So accuracy of these algorithms is really important to our history. So the last part that I wanna to touch on is copyright laws. So YouTube actually uses a version of this audio recognition. I'm not sure if it's the Shazam algorithm um, or not, but it uses this to identify wrongful use of copyrighted audio. And you'll notice that if you post a video with copyrighted audio, it usually gets flagged within the first, you know, three to four minutes of it being up. So it's super, super fast in searching through the YouTube database. And this is important to consider because it is really a scalable application that recognizes um, these fingerprints in songs and it's yeah so here's some of my references um, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my talk I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about Shazam um, its application and its ethical considerations <laughs>